this is uh, Sam Shepard from the Velasta company who uh, makes this particular type of astaxanthin. And cancer can only thrive in a non-oxidated environment. So would you say that th uh, three important aspects of health on the, the chemistry level would be to keep the blood well oxidated, to keep the cell uh, highly nutritionalized, and to keep the limp flowing uh, easily would be three three aspects of the, the shore and good health. Let me explain a little bit as, as to why it works. And it has to do with that, that the pH difference between cancer cells, all caused by uh, hypoxia or an anoxic type of environment. Whenever you have an, an anoxic or an oxygen short um, environment, the um, cancer cell will generate a hydroxyl free radical. And it also generates lactic acid. You've heard of people um, that uh, jog anaerobically. They, don't, they can't get enough oxygen to their muscles. Well, the muscles will produce uh, lac lactase or lactose. Uh, and that's a problem. It generates a free radical. It cracks water into a hydroxyl OH, zero charge, free radical and that OH with a zero charge is is looking for an electron. It's what's called a conjugate acid. Anything that can accept an electron has essentially a lower pH. Well, cancer cells generate hydroxyl free radicals and uh, lactic acid. Both of those lower the pH around that cancer cell, but the cancer cell can survive in it. So between a 4.8 and a 5 and a 6.8 pH, a cancer cell will survive. Our blood pH in every cell in our body is at 7.35, slightly alkaline. So the cancer cell, and, and it's almost hideous when you think about it, creates an acid environment that kills all the normal cells around it and creates space for itself to grow in size and to multiply. That's called a tumor. Those cells around it become necrotic. They die, they're pushed out of the way. The cancer cell becomes more and more massive and, and uh, apparent. Now, the way that the glucosidic astaxanthin works, the velasta, is that the glucose is the only thing that cancer cells consume, typically. It doesn't need oxygen. Cancer cells do not need oxygen. Oxygen would be a detriment to cancer. So, but it needs 20 to 50 times more glucose than a normal cell. That's why cancer patients lose weight. Cancer has priority of all the sugar that you produce in your liver. So any sugar pops into your bloodstream, just from a probability of glucose uh, channel perspective, cancer has priority over all that sugar. So your other cells die from a lack of food. Well, the glucosidic uh, astaxanthin, which is called Velasta, when the cancer sees that glucose, it pulls that, that whole molecule into the inside of the cancer cell. And now you have this glucosidic astaxanthin inside the cell, it's called a Trojan horse. And the cancer enzymes will crack that glucose off and they'll use it for energy. The astaxanthin is an electron donor without itself becoming a free radical. Unlike vitamin C or, or vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin B, they all become uh, free radicals when they do this same phenomenon and they're called prooxidants. But when the astaxanthin denote, uh, donates an electron to the OH zero charge, that OH becomes a minus one charge. An OH minus one shoots the pH over 12 inside the cell, the cancer cell dies in four seconds. Wow. Now, is it, correct me if I'm wrong now, isn't the tumor, what makes it grow is the own body's own natural defense system of trying to stop the, uh, the, the, income, the bad tumor from growing and uh, is surrounded by the body to try to stop it. And it keeps growing and growing and growing based on the body's own protective measures, is that is that pancreatic is like this, and it makes it very very difficult. Um, you can build what's called an extracellular matrix around your your body. Will do this. It's it's like um, it's like a cage. Um, 
the cancer just pushes on it. And the body, key, it, it, it's called a cystic formation. Uh, we see it with parasites in the brain, for example. Uh, Tinea solium is one that comes to mind. It's a parasite that goes to the brain. Um, and your body will build a sac around it and try to isolate it and hold it there. If, if the um, macrophages, the neutrophiles, the basophiles, all your first responders on your immune system can't kill it, then it falls back to the macrophages and the phagocytes and they go in and they try to, to kill it. And chances are that they'll kill the parasite. But how do you get rid of this dime-sized parasite inside your skull? And how do you keep, when it starts to deteriorate, those products from causing neural inflammation where your body builds a sac around it? So the same thing happens with cancer. We see it with viable cancer. We see it with dead cancer cells. There will be a scar. That scar is the collagen wraparound of the injured area to try to isolate. Those are tough to get through. Pancreatic is notorious for putting a cage-like structure around itself to keep chemo out. Um, radiation will penetrate it, but boy, that's a, that's a tough one to deal with. Glioblastoma is another one in the brain, uh, the blastomas that uh, your, your, um, your protein plaques will start to form around it, trying to isolate it. And it just keeps pushes and pushes until you get neurological damage in the brain. And in the pancreas, it becomes totally dysfunctional. It'll break through into the arteries and some cells will break loose and go to other parts of the body. Now, now, on that same level, how dangerous is it for somebody who is suspected of having cancer to get a biopsy? Because wouldn't biopsy be cutting open a cancer tumor? There is some risk associated with biopsies. They've got it down pretty carefully, but anytime you crack through that extracellular matrix to pull a sample of that tumor to look at it, you've just opened up a channel for cancer cells to be released into the, uh, into the bloodstream. And if if those cells are released into the bloodstream, some of them are fairly large, they get to the capillaries, typically where most of the blood flow is, is the brain, the heart or the lung. Um, and secondary cancers, and that's called metastatic, by the way, um, those cancer cells will find a spot, get lodged into that very narrow capillary. It has enough oxygen, it'll start through, um, um, atherogenesis, where they'll, they'll start pulling in blood vessels in, in to nourish it, to bring sugar to it. Um, anytime you crack into it, surgery will do this. And that's why there's so much uh, emphasis on cleaning the margins. Yeah, melanoma, we see it. You might have a, 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 uh, a tiny pin part of melanoma, by the time they're done, they've re removed a quarter size piece of skin from you. They can't risk having a cell that's now outside the extracellular matrix of its confinement that might break loose and end up in one of these high pulmonary areas or cardiovascular areas of the brain or the pulmonary areas of the heart and lung. Is this why they would recommend if somebody gets a tumor removed to still do chemo? It is. It's an extra degree of safety because they don't know. No one can see a single cell, spend that much time economically to know that they got all of it. So when you deal with it on a mechanical level uh, or on a shotgun approach, um, Surgery is probably, if it's a localized tumor, is probably the, the first option that I would go for if it could surgically be removed. But you want to look at the, at the downsides of that too. Uh, but um, the only way to combat cancer is going to be systemic. You have to chemically send in a drone, a target, or a, uh, a missile into the target. And every single cell, 100% of the cells have to be exposed to this. And I think, I don't know this, this for a fact, 
astaxanthin, especially the glucosidic astaxanthin, works that way because every cell in your body has astaxanthin in it after 30 days. Of the trillion cells, there, there is a molecule of astaxanthin in every cell, whether it's a neuron in your brain, skin, organ, heart, whatever. So it is a total systemic that's safe. Unlike chemo drugs, chemo drugs go to every cell in your body. And there's a very 87% chance that that chemo just converted a normal cell into a cancer cell that's going to represent in one to five years from now. With astaxanthin, we don't see that. Are you in agreement, Sam, that uh, from a cellular level, uh, the quality of our, our, our cells are going to be determined by the quality of our blood? <clears throat> the cell has a little bit of, can deviate because it's, it's a living organism of its own. Blood is only a supply vehicle. Um, for example, blood pH can never change beyond 7.35. So we can't get al alkalinity into the cell except presenting a molecule that can change the intracellular pH of the cell to a more alkaline state. I can't change, if your blood pH changed from 7.35 to 7.3, which would make it more acidic, you'd be very, very sick. If your 7.35 blood changed to 7.4, you'd be extremely sick. So our, our blood is limited in the ability to change. This, this has to happen by what we put into our body, what's delivered to each cell in our body, what our exposure is that generates those four or five free radicals. Here's a good question. Does the, I'm sorry, let me not interrupt you. Finish what you were no, saying. No, 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 go ahead. Go does ahead. this does the does the blood feed the cell or does the cell feed the blood? The blood feeds the cell. Okay, so on that level, uh, again, the quality of the blood is going to determine the quality of the cellular health. Yes, um, not necessarily. Okay, it's, uh, the the blood is just a raw material used by the cell to deliver nutrients. The the uh, protein synthesis in the cell, which is a manufacturing plant is what dictates the performance of that cell. But if, so, there's, if there's not good oxygen in the blood, aren't you choking the cells to a degree? Absolutely, it, that's, a, that's a raw material that's pretty important. So the genetics of the cell can't operate unless it's properly oxygenated. Um, uh, that's why hypoxia, and in, in a couple of the papers that I wrote about the importance of, of not being in an anoxic or a hypoxic state, because that will cause the production facility in your cell to, to find a new equilibrium. And it may not be an equilibrium that, that's desirable. You, the cell is only gonna have two choices. It's either going to go into apoptosis and die for lack of oxygen, or it's going to mutate and become very efficient at producing other proteins that are not the ones that can be used by the cell. So would you say that th three important aspects of health on the, the chemistry level would be to keep the blood well oxidated, to keep the cell uh, highly nutritionalized, and to keep the limp flowing uh, easily would be three three aspects of the, the shore and good health. Would you agree exactly. with that? Exactly. It's, it's, um, it's, like, it's, it's like rivers flowing into a, um, um, an ocean or... Let's say it's, it's uh, three creeks flowing into a pond. The pond is the cell, but you have all these creeks flowing into it, bringing certain things. The, the lymphatic system is one that's really overlooked. It's extremely important. Oh yeah, it's, it's the biggest, it's most overlooked it, and, and it is studied, it, but if you keep that clean, you'll have half the problems. And, and that's the problem. People, they're just destroying the lymphatic system, making the piping system of the body so much harder and the waste is going in the wrong place and it's not going anywhere. It's so thick and, and messed up. That's right. And, and that's the problem I have with chemo. Chemo destroys the lymphatic system, destroys it. It's the waste removal um, 
Um, a cell will die in its own waste if the lymphatic system isn't removing it. Chemo will kill the lymphocytes and the, the white blood cells that are they're in the, the lymphatic system. There's, there's others there, basophils, neutrophils. But that's the waste. We have cells that are dying in their own feces. And that lymphatic system is so important. And it's not something that's, um, people look at your blood work. You know, they don't look at, at, the, at, at the lymph. Um, somebody, if it was easy to do, they could pull samples and take a look at it and pretty much determine. I've, I've done this on, um, if you wanna know how a community is performing, don't go look at their water intake. Go look at the sewage plant. Everything is in the sewage plant that happens in that community. We looked at it from a Department of Defense program where we were pulling sludge samples out of, out of adversarial countries. We could tell exactly chemically what was going on, how the diet of the people were, all from the waste. It's, it has a tendency to be after the fact, and that's always, always you know, the issue. But um, it would be nice if we could prevent a disease happening and not wait till after it presents. And the lymphatic system is very good at looking after the fact um, as to what's going on. So it can point you in a very, very uh, uh, definitive direction as to how I want to treat this or how is this quote community called the human body actually operate. The links below the video, Sam, thank you so much and uh, keep up the great research and a great work. Thanks Paul for all your support. Velasta is the strongest antioxidant. When you control your level of inflammation by neutralizing free radicals, then you control your health. What's causing diseases? I found four free radicals. These are chemical species called ROS, reactive oxygen species. That's what causes over 90% of human inflammatory disease are those four free radicals. The Velasta neutralizes all four of those. As you start to feel inflammation come down, you feel younger, you feel like you can do more, you have more energy. I think a lot of people are run down, they're exhausted and they think that that's how aging is supposed to be. And we're trying to tell people to get on the prevention side that you don't have to get used to feeling bad. Medicine treats the symptoms. We're eliminating the cause. And that's what Velasta does. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life. Brighten up your life Order Astadantin by Velasta at rawlife.com. The direct link is below this video in the description.